All right, so um, what we need to do is start to lay a foundation about what is SEO and SEM, why is it important. Go ahead and open your web browser. We've got all the popular ones down here, any one that you'd like. Open your web browser. And what we're going to do is, is conduct a couple of searches. So the web has hundreds of billions of websites. How do we find it? We search for them. And we use a search engine. We use it consciously or subconsciously. The search engines now are basically built into the web browser. Web browser is software for me to browse the web, for me to go to websites. And I can go to a search engine to find a website. I'm not going to pull up the phone book, even though they keep dropping it on my doorstep every year. Uh, I'm going to go to uh, a website to search, or my web browser's got built-in search nowadays. But we'll do this. In your web browser, let's go to the biggest, most famous search engine at the moment, google.com. You've probably heard of this. You probably use it every day, consciously or subconsciously. Google.com. It's the biggest search engine. At the moment, it's got about 65% market share or so. You might have thought, well, I thought everyone used Google. I thought it was number one, 100% market share, or at least 90%. No. It's only, quote unquote, only got about 65% market share. It used to have about 80% 80 mar 80 market share. Um, before there was Google, does anyone remember Yahoo? Yes. Yahoo.com. That one had at one point like 95% market share. 95% of all the people were using Yahoo when the web was a lot younger, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. Um, Google then eventually came out. It started to gain traction. It got up to like 80% and Yahoo went down really low. And then it peaked and now it's going down only 60%, 65% of the hundreds of billions of searches globally. There's a number two search engine that has come out that is increasing, gaining market share. Anyone know the second most popular search engine? Bing. 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 You may have never heard of it, you may have never used it, but hundreds of millions of people do have heard of it and do use it. Let's take a look at its homepage for a moment. Bing.com. B-I-N-G.com. Google, Bing. They're both the same sort of tool. They look very different. Google is very Spartan except for its, you know, whimsical color scheme. And Bing is, uh, at the moment, it's a bit more frenetic. Look at that snowboarder there. And you've got these headlines and top searches and such. But it's got a search box. That's the purpose of a search engine. You type something to search you find a result, you're happy. That's what we do nowadays. We search. And oftentimes, even without going specifically to a search engine, our web browser, you just start search, you start typing up here in the web browser itself, Firefox, Chrome, Safari, Internet Explorer, whatever. It has search built in nowadays. So you don't even have to go directly to the search engines to use them. They're built in. But we're still searching. And so we're going to talk about both of these search engines because Bing has got about 20% market share. Only 20%? Why would I care about only 20%? It's hundreds of millions of searches globally, hourly, whatever. It's got lots and lots of traffic at 20%. And Google used to have 80%. And I'm not saying Bing is going to take over. Probably not. It has so much momentum and power, Google, that I don't think it's going to go down to 20% and being 80%, whatever. I think they're both very valuable to, to know about and to um, optimize for, as we'll talk about in this class. And so we're going to address both search engines and its nuances, because the purpose of the search engine is to give you results when you search, and each one has its own algorithm, its own software, its own technique, to give you the best results, what it thinks is the best results. So how long has it been in the market? Almost 10 years, maybe? 7, 8, 10 years or so? We can look it up, but it's been around a while. Let's, on Google here, let's um, search. So I'm going to use as, most, as often as possible the generic term 
let's search it. I'm not going to say let's Google it because it's not the only search engine out there. And Google is a company, not a verb. So I'm going to search on Google. I'm going to search on Bing. I'm going to search on Yahoo. I'm not going to say I'm going to Google it on Bing. It doesn't make sense. I'm just going to search for it. So I, I'm going to say it that way, and I hope you do too, because we want to optimize for all the search engines, the two big ones at least. They're search engines. It's not all Google all the time. Let's go to Google, and then we're going to search here. Go ahead and type your name as you are commonly known. And so if you are commonly known as, if your full name, for example, is William Jefferson Clinton, but you are known as Bill Clinton, right? search for your name as you are commonly known. We get a page of results. I get 25.6 million results in about half a second. And there's some pictures on top. None of those are me. In my case, there's also this call-out box on the side with this particular Victor Campos, born in 1980, uh, I mean, 81 years old, in these various movies. That's not me. And then you get these various results, Internet Movie Database. That's not me. Victor Campos at Center European Community. That's me. Victor Campos LinkedIn. That's me. Victor Campos at one of my websites. That's me. And so some of them are me and some of them are not. And then I get results about suggestions about, do you mean the actor, the attorney, uh, the, the DJ, or the doctor, or the doctor DJ? Um, you get related results. And you get on and on and on of results, which most people will not go too far into this. Three is pushing it. Think about yourself. When you search for something, how often do you go deeper into the results? Maybe you know, or maybe you have a habit of going all the way to 10. I've got to find the right one, so all the way to 10. That's not too common. People assume that the first page of results, maybe the second page, has my results, best results. Even though Google tells me 25 million results, these 10, for most people, are going to be the right result somewhere. And that's what SEO is. It's the art and the science and the magic of getting on this first page or the second page. If you're on page 12 and you get to page 3, you're doing SEO well because eventually you want to get to page 1. Um, I'm going to compare. I'm going to search my name exactly the same way I searched in Bing. I'm going to go over to... I'm going to open another tab here. I'm in... Chrome and you can open a new tab or a new window by clicking that little empty icon there. Um, I'm opening a new window, a new tab for being search myself the same way that I search for myself in Google. As you're typing, it might be giving you suggestions. Make a note of that. Google or Bing give you suggestions as you type. We'll see why that might be valuable later on. Okay, Bing results. Only four and a half million results. Okay, um, number one result is the actor again. I'm not 81 years old. Uh, number two is the LinkedIn links, pictures, uh, Facebook. That's not mine. Then there's then up here there was all top ten victors on LinkedIn. But then a little further down is my LinkedIn profile which looks a little different than the one of Google. Google just showed Victor Campos and my little snippet of, of biography here. But then Bing shows it sort of the same way, except it also says my job title and other things. So same result, but presented slightly different. What else? Rotten Tomatoes, that's the actor, that's not me, PQ, whatever that is, the white pages. Uh, and then again the actor. So more of the results on Bing are skewed toward the actor, whereas on Google more of them are skewed toward me. Did you find anything on, uh, on Yahoo first that you weren't expecting? Did you want to find anything they weren't expecting on uh, Yahoo? On Google? On page one on Google, on Bing, I'm not there at all. Hmm. Okay, so a little bit of difference there. If you 
found content of yourself on Bing, how many of you found something on Bing that was not on Google? A few people, or vice versa. So this is the point of we want to optimize, we want to target uh, both search engines because one may show something different than the other. They're both browsing the same web, but each one has its own algorithm, its own trade secrets, its own company, you know, proprietary algorithm, its own technique for finding, quote-unquote, the best results. I'm going to go back to Google, and this time, if you've got a company, search for your company, the name of your company as, as it is. Um, if you don't have a company, you can search for mine just to see a result, PMD Interactive. Don't search the, don't get too complex, don't, don't search for a location or, the, or whatever, just search for the name of your company on Google first. <coughs> so, number one result. I have perfect SEO, right? I'm done. No. This is a false kind of search because if a person wanting to hire you knew the name of your company, it doesn't help you very much that you're number one here because obviously Google or Bing are going to show your company number one if you search for your exact name of your company. I'll explain that a bit more in a moment. But here on Google, number one result is, is our website and it's got an update right here about one of the latest uh, blog posts that we've added to the site. It's got some of these deep links so if people want to check out our graphic design portfolio, our e-commerce, etc., it shows you more detail. Then we've got Facebook with the review of Facebook. Then we've got our page on Yelp. Then we've got our Twitter, a couple of our Android apps, the company LinkedIn, one of our videos, and then something called Alignable.com. I'm going to do the same search in Bing, my company name, same way. Number one result again, the company. Deep links that tell you to go directly to the about page. The address. Look at this. Very different on Bing in that there's then a map and Yelp reviews and all of that right on the search page. Then there's the there's the services page gets a gets a mention here as well. Then the Twitter, Yelp, and Facebook. On Google, Facebook was higher than Twitter or Yelp. And on Bing uh, Twitter and Yelp are higher than Facebook. Yes. What is that? I think that means that it's open, that the company is open at the moment. Um, so LinkedIn again. There's our YouTube with stats, how many subscribers and views and such. There's Google Plus. The point of this, this kind of search, is that. This is showing you everything besides the website. SEO is what we do on the website. SEM is what we do outside of the website. And they're very important nowadays because if you've only got a website, there's very little for the search engine to show to the world when someone searches. But if you're also on Twitter and Facebook and Yelp and Angie's List or whatever, if you're also on other sites, there's more for the search engines to find of you and show of you when someone searches. So that's why SEO and SEM, search engine marketing, is very important. If you've only got a website, that's the minimum nowadays. A few years ago it was, do you have a website? Obviously now it's, you have a website. Now the question is, what's your Facebook? What's your Instagram? What's your Yelp? What's your Snapchat? You know, what's your other avenue that you're online besides your website? Because people turn on Facebook on their computer and leave it on all day long. People are walking around all day long on Instagram, on Twitter, on whatever. They're using 
social media a lot nowadays. And that's one of the big things, social media. Blogging is also important because as you create more blog posts and content, the search engines can find it. So the more content that you create, the search engines can find and rank you. So quick show of hands. How many of you have currently a website? How many of you are going to build a website in the next six months? Okay. How many of you have also Facebook? All right. Twitter. Uh, Instagram. Pinterest. Peach. That's the newest social network that just came out a month ago that you've never heard of. Peach. P a p e a c h. Peach. Um, you can actually search how to use Peach like a pro. And look at that, a blog post from our company. Number one, <laughs> on how to use Peach like a pro. And the video we made for it. So if you want to get in on the latest social network, Peach, We've got a couple of things about it. A blog post and a video. And what is Peach about? It's another social network. You go there, you connect with customers, you post stuff, you build a presence, you get attention, all of the concepts of social media, which I'll go on in detail. Why does social media matter? I'll, I'll get to that. But it's just another social network to reach an audience. And so SEO, SEM, what are you doing besides your website? If you're not doing very much besides your website, that could be one of the reasons why you don't rank very well on the search engines. Because now they are also looking at other things besides your website. Because any spammer can make a website. And yes, any spammer can make a Twitter account. But can any spammer make a good Twitter account with good followers and traffic and likes and such? No, a real company with real content is what's going to attract traffic from their social media. And the search engines are very smart nowadays. They look at so many pieces of information. They call them signals. They look at so many signals to rank you up here. And you can, of course, bypass all of that by paying for it. ADHD and adult symptoms. They pay to be number one in this result. It's marked as an ad, not too obviously, but they paid to be number one on this result. We'll talk about that, of course. But our tactic and our um, method that we're going to do this that I recommend is the hard way, the long way. The easy way and the short way is to pay for it, but that's <coughs> fleeting. The long way is what we'll talk about. Let's go back to Google, and we'll do another search. This time, let's search for a simple keyword about your company. And what I mean by that is, we're a web design company. I'm going to search for web design. I'm not going to get complex and search web design San Diego or any other sort of complex search yet. I want to search what's the basic, what's one of the basic concepts of my company? What am I doing? What am I selling? What am I about? Just a basic one or two or three word basic search like this. Web design. And I'll do the same thing also on Bing. I'll also search web design. So, uh, Google gives me 1.6 billion results and Bing 1.3 billion results. Um, and then on Google, I get all of these results. And then I get deluxe.com. They're number one. They must be the best. Let me click and hire them. Right? They're number one. Well, they pay for number one. These are clear, clearly marked as ads. How much did they pay? We can kind of do that research a little bit later. But they paid to get to be number one. Website, top build, website Builder Top 10 didn't pay quite enough to be number one. And Squarespace, 
paid, but not enough to be there. Squarespace is a much bigger and more famous company than Deluxe.com, and yet they're not number one. Then we've got Mopro.com. Then we've got a bunch of results on a map. How did it know I'm in San Diego? Well, nowadays our computers, specifically the web browsers, actually broadcast a lot of information that you're not aware of that might find you might find a little concerning. And one of them is that it broadcasts your general location to the website that you visit. So it knew that I'm in San Diego, and then it's not giving me results of web designers in New York. Obviously, there's talented designers in New York, LA, Seattle, Austin, wherever, but it knows that I'm in San Diego, so it's going to give me the best results for San Diego. And I want this. I want to appear as a little dot on a map. Because would you hire one of these web design companies in this section or in this section? It looks just like another plain old link that I've seen for years. I might at least subconsciously get drawn to this one over here that has a website and directions and star rating and all of that. To achieve something like that is that they've also got a Yelp or Google Places, meaning a place for someone to review your website. Oftentimes when you get these top results with rankings, it's because they're on Yelp or Angie's List or Kudzu or Google Places, Yahoo Local. They're a place for people to review you. That's becoming another important factor of modern SEO. What are people saying about you? It doesn't matter the techniques. It doesn't matter if you read the SEO manual, and I'll show you where that's at. It doesn't matter if you read the manual and you do it all. If no one actually vouches for you, rates you and such, that might not be so... your efforts might not be so uh, accurate if you're just doing SEO techniques. You also need to get reviews and testimonials and engage in SEM. How many of you have a Yelp uh, company profile? Uh, probably most of you do and you don't know it because anyone can create a Yelp uh, listing for your company. You don't have to create it yourself. You don't have to ask Yelp to create it. Someone can create it. Someone visits your store, they have a bad experience, they look you up on Yelp, don't exist, let me create them and give you a one-star review. So if you haven't yourself created one of these review sites like Yelp, Yelp's the big one, you need to create it so that you can deal with the negative comments because this is one of the things here. Why would Bing or, or Google put a two-star website as number one here? They're going to put the four stars, the five stars. This has got one review, this has got no reviews. That's why that's number one. On Bing, I see something similar. There's a company that paid. They paid. Uh, Wix.com paid. They're number one. They're at the top. They've got so many great reviews. And um, then I go a little bit further. There's Website Builder Top 10. Oh, they're, they're also. They're number two on Google and number two on Bing. Then there's Deluxe.com. They're number three, whereas they're number one on Google. But most of us now are becoming much more savvy that we skip the ads. We know that it's an ad. They're getting preferential treatment. They skip it. I don't even look on the side. They paid for it all. Google and Bing both have, have that. Google is more obvious that it's yellow here. It's an ad. Someone paid for it. Bing is not so obvious at the moment, but it also says that's an ad. They paid for that placement on the top or the side. And as I scroll down a bit, then there's a line here. And then on Google, there's no line, but you can also see the organic results. Webdesign.org, Jacob Tyler, Google.com web designer, Jacob Tyler right there, Bob Design, Yelp, Wikipedia. So this is a very crowded place to try to get into, these top 10 results, and for the various reasons we'll talk about. So Jacob Tyler's here, highly on Google and on Bing. 
web design is higher and so forth, and you might get different results. It's different algorithms, different techniques that the search engines believe are better to give you your results. Tinyfrog.com over here. And so the kind of search that I did is the kind of search that's very hard to, to break into. It's such a generic keyword, web design. Um, it's going to be very hard to, to crack this because companies are paying to, for, for eyeballs, they're paying to get, to get viewed, they're paying for impressions, an impression is just that your company is shown on the result, it's an impression, they, people saw it. If people actually click on it, that's a conversion. They saw your page, they actually clicked on it. There's a little bit of lingo here. Con uh, impressions people see your site or your result. Conversion, conversions, people click your result. That's related to this other buzzword, CTR, click through rate. It'll make more sense a little later, but I can have a thousand impressions thousand people saw my site, but my conversions are only seven. I only got seven clicks out of that one thousand. Seven divided by a thousand is your CTR. How many impressions as opposed to clicks? So conversions divided by impressions. So CTR is equal to uh, conversions divided by impressions. Conversions is an actual action in an impression. It's just that they saw you, that they're aware of you. Just like you drive by that that billboard <coughs> every day. Lots of impressions, you and every other driver. Some of them are actually going to pick up the phone, hopefully when they're done driving, and then call and get that realtor or that plumber or whatever. So the impressions are one thing and the conversions are another. You, as a person using the web for a while, probably, um, knows that this kind of search is not really going to work anymore. This is going to hit way too many results. 1.6 billion. Needle in a haystack. You're not going to be found this way. It's not going to behoove us to try to break into this top 10 with these, with this keyword. <coughs> Instead, we, we want to uh, search smarter because more people are searching smarter in that they're more specific. What if I search for uh, best Italian food restaurants restaurants in Chula Vista? That's the kind of search I'm going to do and more people are going to do because it's more specific and I've personally seen that I'm getting better results. On Google I get a page of results, a nice little map, this call out box here, and there's my client. Has an easy point structure here. 4.7 uh, stars on Yelp, 22 reviews. Um, there's the other competitors on the same street. They're all on the same street there. Then a little bit further down, outside of this map, there's the client, number one. There's the client, um, the client's website right there. Um, there's one of the competitors. There's the other competitor, and so forth, the other competitor. But this top results of this particular search, my client takes a few of the slots. Out of the ten slots, they've got like two or three or so from there. But notice the number one result out of the map is a Yelp result. So you don't have to be number one on your website. Because if, you're, if you've got a presence on Yelp, on Facebook, on Twitter, whatever, and that's number one, that's still going to give you traffic. 
especially if on your Yelp or Facebook or whatever, you have a link back to your home page. There's the website. I don't have to get the traffic directly from the search engine with my website, number one. If you get it from your Yelp, from your Kudzu, from your Etsy shop, whatever, that's still a win. But you're not going to get that unless you're also active on other platforms besides your own website. SEM, what are you doing outside of your website? Search engine marketing. This company is also on Yelp. They've got great reviews on Yelp. And that helps. That one, not so good. But you've got lots of great results, reviews on Yelp. And that's why the Yelp account is number one. The number two result is just a search of Italian food on Yelp. So number two place is also taken by not a company, not a website itself, a review site. And so there's the competitor, there's my client, there's the other competitors, all of these reviews. So I would be, if I was a, a realtor, if I was a babysitter, if I was a web designer, I want to appear in some of these results besides the search engines. I want to appear on some of these review sites, these testimonial sites, because that's going to help me get traffic. Comparing with Bing. In this case, Bing is giving me a big, beautiful uh, you know, hero image over here of all of these clients, I mean, of all of these companies, and then our client right there also. That's going to make me click there, even though I've got um, however many thousands of results. I have all of these results down here that I may or may not look at. I'm going to look at these. I'm going to get wowed by the food. I'm going to click on one of them. Yes, they're number one. The competitor's number one. Four stars, four and a half. Three and a half. Four. Three. Five. Five stars is better than four stars. Yes, but one review. Obviously, the owner reviewed it himself. <laughs> That's not really true, but you get my idea. And then here, 289 reviews. Which are you going to trust more? So, what else are you doing besides your website is the point of all of this. You want to create that Yelp profile. Maybe you've already got that Yelp profile. You need to claim your Yelp profile. That's a process we don't have time to talk about here. But you can go to your, if you see your company on Yelp, there's going to be a button that says claim your business. You go through a process. It's free. You can claim your Yelp. And then the point of having that is that you can answer the negative comments. That's a whole concept there on these review sites. The point of a review site, answer the negative comments. I have a question on that. Just one moment. Answer the negative comments to turn them into positive comments. Question. Okay. I just went on Yelp and gave myself a good review, but it's the church thrift store. So my name in the church thrift store, it's not so obvious that, sure. that I uh, have an interest in it, and that's why I gave myself five store five stars. Sure. But if I now go in and claim the business, will it affect me acting like a separate individual Oh, yeah, I just happened to shop again. It's great. It will, because Yelp is uh, very mindful of this, about these ways that we can hack the system. That could be one way. If you are a separate entity on Yelp from the business, then your, your review is, is technically okay. Um, they might filter it and such for various other reasons, though. So I got away with it once. Once I claim the business, yeah. then I have to get other people to Yelp for me. Yes. And also, the Yelp algorithm can be very harsh in that, let's say you gave any business, not just your own, five stars. 
but you're not very active on Yelp. Yelp is going to take that into account and probably filter your re review and not make it part of the ratings. If you just went into Yelp one time to give an amazing review, it's probably going to take it away because you're not a serious Yelper. Also with negative reviews, if you're so mad at that company and you logged in and you give it one star and you created the Yelp account specifically to put them down, they're going to take that review down also. Yelp wants real people that use Yelp on a regular basis that have 20 reviews, 15 reviews, whatever. They want people that use Yelp on a regular basis to give a real opinion to, for those stars. And if there's an affiliation between the two companies, worst case scenario is they take the review away and you've got zero reviews again whatever but then the whole point of this is to get reviews from real people and that's another big complication but eventually these reviews will help and Yelp is not the only one I've mentioned also here a moment ago Angie's List question anyone can try to claim the business but the way that it fully gets claimed is that they verify you they the business has a phone number that is publicly known, Yelp calls uh, automatedly to the business to confirm with a code number, or it sends a postcard to the business. So anyone can try to claim a business, but there's safeguards that are supposed to only let you, the owner, claim it. And, and it works. So another hand? No. Okay, so Yelp is one review site We've also got Angie's List. We've also got Kudzu. We've got TripAdvisor. That's a bit more for hotels and restaurants and such. And there's some other ones. Does anyone know some other ones? Review sites for a particular industry? It's not a review site, but LinkedIn, that's your SEO. Yeah, yeah. LinkedIn is also related because it's SEM. And uh, I believe there you can create you can create companies definitely, and I don't remember at the moment if people can rate it or not. But in short, LinkedIn is still important because it's a social network. It's still another part of SEM where you can get <coughs> fame and traffic and such. Glassdoor. Glassdoor, yeah. So Glassdoor.com, etc. So there's plenty of these review sites out there. Not everyone applies to every company. For example, like <coughs> TripAdvisor is really for restaurants and hotels and such. Glassdoor, I, I believe it's for any company, but it's often for tech companies. Uh, so people, this is this is crowd crowdsourced content. This is this is testimonials. This is reviews from real people. It's the wisdom of the crowd. Uh, if a lot of people are giving a restaurant two stars, it must mean it's not a great restaurant. Uh, and people always ask me, but is Yelp real? I've heard that they do this and they do that and they pay for this and they do that. Yes, all of your concerns, the positive and the negative to various degrees, are real. And what I mean by that is yes, Yelp does engage in some strong arm tactics. When you claim your account there, they're going to start calling you. And they're going to start to say, you're doing really well on Yelp. Wouldn't you like to do better? No problem. Pay for this ad. Pay for that. Pay for this. They're going to, they're going to start that. Um, you can just say, no thank you. No thank you. No thank you. And you can keep doing it all the free way. Yes, there's a problem with a company that creates five profiles to give themselves five stars the algorithm will eventually find out these five accounts were created in the same week and they're all giving it five stars let's remove those reviews so there's the positive there's a the negative um, you can handle it the, f the free way you don't have to pay for anything but you're gonna have to work to get people's reviews to get you 289 I know for a fact that this client has never bought anything on Yelp he hates Yelp and so all of these reviews are real, from real people. Um, one of the things about any of these review sites that I want to say here, back to this point, answer negative comments to turn them into positive. Never bribe. Oh, oh I heard about that. <laughs> never tell someone, we're sorry, or never tell, you know, someone wrote, I had a terrible lunch today, one star. Never say, please come back. 50% off, meals on the house. Don't ever give anything away to get that better review. Because 
believe it or not, some people make a living giving bad Yelp reviews and trapping companies into giving them free stuff because they care about their Yelp reviews so much and that person is giving bad reviews and they're getting a free thing here and a free thing there and a free thing everywhere. Never bribe for a good review. What you're going to do is customer service. You're going to say, we're sorry for that bad experience. We're going to work our hardest to improve the situation. Please give us another chance. Don't dangle any free thing, any percentage off, nothing like that. You're going to say, we're sorry. We see the problem. We're going to fix it. Give us another chance in those kinds of words. Um, I just had a friend slash <coughs> client. He um, runs a comic book shop in Mission Valley. And he got a bad review saying that uh, I went to the store and I heard the, the clerk behind the counter saying some very racist things in the middle of the day. I'm never coming back one star. So obviously he panicked and he said, uh, what do I do about this? And I said, you're going to discipline the employee, of course. You're going to write a review that says, you know, that clerk doesn't represent the views of our company and we're sorry for this we hope it doesn't taint your experience here please give us another chance etc so even the worst kind of review real review can be dealt with to show that you're dealing with it you're gonna go on these rating sites and you're gonna deal with the negative comments publicly because you can rep you can respond in private or public you want to do this publicly you want to see other people, you want to show other people that you're serious about this and that you're addressing it publicly. 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 You're going to um, check your reviews on Yelp at the very least. You can create, you can get reviews on Facebook too. <coughs> on Facebook too, if you didn't know. You can get them just about everywhere. So the point of all of this is you're going to be more specific. You're going to develop a keyword strategy because what we've done here is we've searched a keyword. First it was the basic web design. What if I search basic Italian food? Well, it might give me results up in you know Miramar and I want to drive up to Miramar to eat something so I'm a little bit more specific this is the kind of search more people are doing maybe you find yourself doing it too you're getting specific I wrote best Italian food I want Italian food but I want best Italian food maybe I want Ita authentic Italian food and I'm saying a location Chula Vista I'm being specific this is modern SEO this is being specific thinking in terms of how people are searching and being specific with a search. You're not going to get found with web design. You're not going to get found with Italian food. It's way too generic. It's too locked down. You're going to get results in the top 10 of an article about what is Italian food. And you're not going to knock them out of the top 10, perhaps. Wikipedia often comes up on these results. You're not going to knock Wikipedia out of the top 10. You're going to type something specific like this. We're going to have a little activity in a moment where we're going to develop our keywords. Uh, this type of specific keyword because another um, another way that people that people search is like this what's a good uh, Mexican food restaurant nearby when the internet works okay. here are 10 Mexican food restaurants that have good reviews near you it knows my location because these things have GPS. It gave me these top results here with star ratings and a distance. So La Fuente Mexican Food has 100 reviews. It's one mile away. Palomino's Mexican and Seafood is one mile away. 102 reviews, four stars, <clears throat> etc. And then I can tap and give me directions. The point of this is that more people are using their smartphones to search in a natural language way. I asked it like I would ask a person, and it gave me results. Here I'm asking also in a more natural way. 
And so that's what we need to be engaging nowadays, writing these, developing these keywords, and we'll see how in a moment and how to use them. We need to develop these keywords because that's how people are searching more. You may never do it, you may, do, you may not know anyone that does it, but hundreds of millions of people do this, this way, being specific when they search. I have a question about location. If you're in the south part of San Diego, you might be willing to drive to Chula Vista because you're not, you know, depending where you are, it's just a few more miles. Sure. So will the fact that somebody might say San Diego won't bring up the same places as Chula Vista will? Is there a way of overcoming the geography? No, if a person is specifically asking for a location, it's going to skew results to that location because they were specific. So if you say San Diego, thinking in a larger geographic area, I'm willing to drive or I'm real close to the border, you don't think to stay to Vista, you might miss it. Yeah, that could happen. But if you are also on Twitter or Yelp or Angie's List and such, that's going to give also some boost to get you found. Oh, okay. Um, this other client that is a uh, tax preparer, he was uh, he got a few calls. He's starting to get traffic from SEO, and he always asks, "How did you hear about us?" So make a note of this. Ask the customer, "How did you hear about us?" He was saying he got a brand new tax client. When someone searched on Bing to find a very specific a very specific tax situation, his website mentions that very specific tax situation, those specific keywords. So someone found him because they were specifically looking for something that others were not providing. Um, so it's about specificity. How specific are we to get found? This, for example, this is interesting, uh, I just noticed uh, Mangia Italiano is on the same street as Italianissimo, but these guys, Savoy, are way off on Otay Ranch East Lake. They're like seven miles away, difference. So there is a range, it's not an exact science. Um, see, this is over in East Lake, this is in Chula Vista and such. But the point is that the search engines are pulling in more signals, not just your website. What's your Twitter? What's your Yelp? What's your Facebook? Etc. Let's um, let's take our first break to process some of this. I'm going to give you a, a handout and an activity right after the break. It's about uh, 10.40. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 10.50. If you'd like to print the syllabus, I'll turn the printer back on, but let's take a quick break until 10.50 and we'll go on.